Now it's time for us to hear from the word. Uh, there are a lot of vacant seats up front. So if you could please rise up and then move forward, that would be better so that the speaker does not have to keep looking at empty chairs you know, in front. So to share the word today, I'm going to invite Viji. No, last time, uh, Shilpa gave a feedback that no one could see me. So is it okay? Are you able to see me? My, yeah. Thanks. I think uh, many are today watching on YouTube. I think many are very less. It's probably because of yesterday's tiredness. I think people have really worked so, so hard, everyone who was there and must be just watch, decided to stay back and watch on YouTube. John and Sunil, please sit down. Yeah, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this time. Even as I share your word, oh Lord, I pray that you will speak to each one of us, help me. Lord, that you will help me to say the words and share what is in your heart, O oh Lord. Pray that may everything come out of the, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we will all be, you know, we'll understand what is, what, what is your heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so the other day in, uh, the, uh, in, uh, in Jia school, uh, each each uh, child they were supposed to talk about a book that they read. So uh, Jia chose uh, to talk about a story that uh, she had read. It, I don't know many of you might be knowing. It's it's called Charlotte's Web. So uh, some of you uh, would have. I mean those are children. I think they would definitely know. Yeah. So uh, she explained the story uh, well. And the story, is, the gist of the story is like this. You know, the, there are two friends. Uh, one is a spider. The spider's name is Charlotte. And there is a uh, pig. And the pig's name is Wilbur. So these two are friends. So once the pig uh, gets into trouble, the spider saves the, uh, this Wilbur. And in the process, the spider dies. So the theme of the story is like, you know, what a good friend the spider has been that is the charlotte that she gave you know she gave her life to her friend at the uh, i mean she saved the friend at the cost of her life so after saying this uh, jia uh, you know concluded saying that i wish i would have a friend like that so i, I and i i later on i heard that Binnie wanted her to tell that i wish i would be a friend like that to somebody so it was uh, so that was that was funny, but the point here is we all like to have a friend like that. And we all would like to be like that friend, like uh, how Charlotte was to uh, the Wilbur. So, but unless we experience that kind of friendship, uh, a, a sacrificial friendship, we cannot be like that. No, we cannot. You know, it, it is simply impossible. This kind of friendship will only remain in books and movies and stories and things like that. It will not, you know, un unless we really experience. So even as the world is celebrating Christmas, uh, the birth of Jesus, okay, so even, uh, um, just so let us just look at this uh, new angle of what Jesus has to offer. So uh, we saw last couple of Sundays, uh, if you remember, firstly how Jesus touched and cleansed a leper. That was the first one. So we were like that untouchables for God. Not with physical leprosy but with the worse, something worse than that, that is the, our sin. So which was, uh, so how God loved us so much that he touched us, each one of us, and healed us and made us new. And also the next Sunday we saw how uh, this abundant grace of God has healed a child. 
you know when the mother just perseveres she sits at his feet and says you know god you heal so how uh, the the child is healed so we were reminded of how we can celebrate god's abundant grace because we were like that we were like those that like uh, in that passage last time jason took us through uh, the dogs which only deserved crumbs but then now we are children of god you know like undeserving so you know and children of god who inherits everything that jesus has so from where to where we have you know god has changed us what a uh, shift of status that is so so let us continue to rejoice so his his grace is really like undeserving and uh, so he uh, he has healed us from all our unrighteousness and he made us whole so now today let's ponder over this uh, let's just see the this verses john 15 12 13 i think kevin also took us through the same passage so here it says my command is this love each other as i have loved you greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends so here jesus is asking us to love each other okay he said that but after saying that in verse 13 he's he's also in a way explaining uh, how that loving one another looks like practically he says ult- the ultimate love is showed in laying down one's life for his friends and that is what he did for us that is what you know we are his friends that is exactly what he did for us so jesus came into this world to lay down his life for us his friends and that is all of us so like just like how jia wished she had a friend like that you know we have a friend like we have a friend in jesus like that who you know gave his life for us we were destined to die right we were destined to die but he died in our place so that we could be saved and he loved us so much that he was committed to be our friend and he didn't want us to die so that made him to persevere through that ordeal on the cross so all of us who know jesus as a savior and the lord as people who experienced this extraordinary friendship you know we have all experienced that extra, it's really an extraordinary friendship to just give life like that to die for us and so as people like that we can be friends to others you know and so we have no excuse you know we can be friends like that to others in proverbs 18 uh, 24 i've taken message version it it says in niv it says you know a friend who sticks closer than a brother here it says friends come and friends go but a true friend sticks by you like a family so even when things turn difficult even when things uh, turn difficult i mean what is the meaning of sticking together it is not like physically okay don't leave nowadays you see children no one hand on the shoulder and they walk around no that's not the that's not what it is to stick closer you know what it is meaning is not to leave even when we don't like to stick you know when things are not good we don't like that person even when things turn difficult and that is what jesus showed you know that's what jesus is to us you know he sticks he never leaves us he never forsakes us so he, he never left even peter when he disowned him he never left him and he does it with us today you know we know that he never leaves us and god's love is so unconditional he sticks with us come what may he never leaves us and he he doesn't just stick with us so he doesn't uh, he doesn't stick with us only when we are good okay he, he and it doesn't depend on our performance or our goodness or our faithfulness you know he it doesn't depend he is sticking with us is is because he is faithful you know he is committed to be faithful he is committed to be our friend you know sometimes sticking with someone you know maybe misunderstood like you know okay agree to the person whatever the person says or you know go wherever the person goes and you know do whatever the person does maybe sticking with them 
we misunderstand like that but that's not what it is that's not what jesus does with us it's not about physical sticking basically it says don't reject don't discard a person don't stop loving the person you know hang on hang you know be with them understand them you know and be empathetic with all that they are going through you know with all this is you know holding on to our own convictions god given convictions it doesn't mean that we have to agree on each everything it doesn't mean that but really being a friend to them who uh, no they don't know so and this is how jesus has taught us that's how jesus is to us so i i remember uh, long back someone describing a picture of what you know that depicts this aspect of god that sticking come what may the aspect of god he you know so i just uh, i want to show you a picture even when we are walking away from god okay so even when we are walking away from god you know that, that he still holds us now in the process even if he will be getting hurt but he never leaves i mean this picture somehow it stayed in my mind the way even if we are you know if you think that you know if the that ch- the, the child is walking away outside the fence and you know the, he is not letting go of the, the us you know he will even if that he is getting hurt he will not let go of us so that is what is sticking with the friend that is what it, it means you know who always that it that's what it means uh, of you know always sticks you know when we know jesus sticks with us that would motivate us to be a friend like that for others you know that is the heart of god and we have all experienced this undeserving love of god you know that compels you know oh that undeserving god, love of god that compels him to stick with us so let us extend this friendship to others even as we are you know nearing christmas new year you know let us just uh, ponder over what a friend we have in jesus you know it's not just for us to enjoy that friendship but let the world know that friendship you know let others know let each us let us you know to each other we can be that friends you know and to begin with our families you know within our church family you know let us commit to be that friend to our spouse i am telling myself also let us commit ourselves to be that friend to our family you know fa- spouse and our friends and fa- within the family and for each other and even when others don't reciprocate sometimes we you know people don't reciprocate our love and let us not discard people you know the naval term write off you know don't write off people when we are like that with each other then the world outside will see and know the real true friend jesus who is our motivator who is our inspiration and in proverbs uh, 17 uh, 17 it says a friend loves at all times means even when the person doesn't deserve just keep loving at all times you know that is exactly what jesus did isn't it that is exactly what jesus did he loves us at all times when we are down in the dumps when we are good, being good we are reading our bible we are doing everything right and also when we are doing nothing right even then he continues to love us he loves us at all times you know undoubtedly and and one thing i want to clarify is this friendship that we are talking is not same as making friends okay you know making friends is for us to also receive friendship because bible talks about making friends you know we are you know we have to be careful about making friends you know that just understand the difference you know this when we make friends we are also receiving their inputs we are also you know letting them be our friend i mean so it's a, there is a thing I, here we are talking about jesus has may is become our friend so we can become friends for others so that is the thing you know so there is something that we offer to others and definitely we ought to choose you know to be a friend to 
like how Jesus is to us with others. In a world where everything is so manipulative, right? You know, even friendship is what will I get from this person? What will I get? So that is the world that we live in. So in, you know, it is really, in, you know, then when they, in this type of a uh, world, when they experience the friendship that we offer, the friendship that we receive from Jesus, if we offer that kind of friendship, that is where we are being witnesses. That is where we are being a real witness. It was actually so good to see that, you know, all the, so many of our children yesterday, they were about 58, I mean, this hall was packed, like, you know, like, so it was uh, along with the volunteers, of course, so they were, they all brought their friends. Our children were only uh, 25 or 26. The rest were all, you know, their friends. So it is, I mean, it is, you know, the intention of being friends, uh, bringing friends is that they will know the true and ultimate friend, the Lord Jesus. But that can only happen when we stick with them. When, when we show that unconditional love and when we are ready to lay down our lives. So a friend always sticks always loves and lays down a life so this is so all these three are interlinked you know a friend always sticks and you know it's if you are a friend who always loves you will always stick and you will always give your you know lay down your life at my expense at your uh, good you know so that kind of a thing so uh, the, this season also reminds us of how grace of god as Jason said, you know, who is Jesus himself came down to offer his friendship to us. Because while we were still sinners, he died for us. And he didn't wait for us to get better and then die. While we were still sinners, he died for us. So undeserving people like us, he is calling us his friends. You know, it's normally, you know, uh, here in the Bible it's mentioned that they refer to uh, Jesus as a friend of sinners. You know, so we are so, you know, imagine being called as friend of, you know, some community which are really uh, bad, like, you know, something like that. It's like, it is, so it is really, uh, uh, his friendship is a way too different from all other friendships. He is a friend who remains faithful. Come what may, he will stick with us, you know, and never goes back on his word. A friend who always sticks, a friend who always, you know, uh, lays down his life. He laid down his life. So we all, all have experience. So as people who are growing to be more like him, you know, what should we be, how do we embrace, how do we be like that for others? You know, how does loving at all times, sticking with the friend all the time and laying down our life look like? How does it look like in our lives? It doesn't mean that each of us will go and die for our friends, right? It, I mean, each, it, it, that's not the point. It means when things become difficult, when and every bit in us is saying that just give up on this person, just leave him, or you know he doesn't deserve, or she doesn't deserve my friendship, you know, or or you know this person is too overbearing, I can't handle, you know. So when things are like that when every bit of in us is telling us like that then just dying to those things and really allowing god to work in us in a way that we will continue to love that person so that is laying down of our lives we are laying down our flesh you know we are laying down our uh, uh, thoughts of giving up we are laying down our uh, every inclination that is showing that this is not deserving so everything that is uh, we, we fight against that. So that is, you know, basically laying down is, our lives is like not my good, you know, but let your good be there at my expense. That is what it is. So what is the cost, you know, we are paying? Just putting our own interest aside and doing what is good for the other person. So many times when we meet new people, no. You know, we are all out. We are being very, you know, we are good friends. and we, But slowly we come to know about that person. You know, then we come to know the negative points of the person. Oh, this one is not, you know, doesn't speak my language or, you know, or, you know too overbearing or, you know, it's not my type of a person and things like that. You know, so in Galatians uh, 5, 6, uh, I 
I think it is five. Okay, anyway, well, yeah, it's not 15, I think it's five. Now see, my brothers and sisters, um, yeah, it's the correct. So the verse is correct, the reference is wrong. You were called to be free. So what is, uh, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. I have not put the full verse here. So here Paul is saying, you know, he's saying that we have been set free. Okay, we have been set free and don't take that freedom uh, for granted and indulge in flesh. Okay, just follow this. Then at this point, what do you expect something to come out of this? He is saying, you have been set free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in flesh. What would you think should come there? Natural, in the natural, what do you think it should come? At this point, we would expect that sentence to be completed as, rather indulge in spirit. Isn't it? But what does Paul say here? But rather serve one another humbly in love. You know, so it is something, you know, very strange. So what Paul is saying is loving one another and serving is vital. It is very important. You know, let us think of, you know, what comes as hindrances to offer this kind of friendship, you know, where love flows at all times. No, when even when people betray us, even when they don't agree with us, even when they don't meet our expectations, even when they stop performing, you know, the list can go on and on why we don't want to. We don't, you know, there are reasons why we cannot continue to love, we cannot continue to stick. You know, so Paul here is listing out three things. You know, let us not become conceited provoking and envying each other. Here Paul is saying we live by the spirit but we must not become, so we must not become conceited. Don't provoke each other and don't envy each other. So he is saying when we are conceited, we provoke and we become envious. So what is, uh, you know, it's, so he is saying when we are conceited and are provoking, we cannot be loving and serving others. Okay? So being conceited and being envious, here there is something very interesting we can see. Being conceited, being envious, being, you know, provoking others, it actually, you know, it, it, it's, it is, that is a behavior towards others. Right? It's not about us, it's a, our behavior towards others. But actually, it comes out of our opinion about ourselves. You know, these things happen when we are, you know, we don't, we don't think of ourselves rightly. That is when these things happen. Even though these are the expressions, these are the things we do to others, but these things come as a result of us not, you know, uh, thinking of ourselves rightly. So what does it mean? What is the meaning of being conceited? It is really having an opinion about ourselves which is false, which is empty, which is really uh, vain. So that is being conceited. So when we are conceited, our friendships with, with other people are bound to be poisoned. We take offense or we become uh, very bitter or we badmouth the person. So according to Paul, when we are conceited, we tend to do one of the two things. Either we provoke them or we envy them. So both are motivated by feelings of inferiority or superiority. You know, one thing is we either we are so we think of ourselves so good, so much that we are our superiority that we want to demonstrate it. Then we challenge them and we provoke them. You know, we kind of, but ultimately just to prove ourselves, you know, we do that. And this sometimes we don't have to necessarily do in words, but we also do in actions. Quiet actions also can uh, convey this message. On the other hand, if we are feeling very inferior, you know, we, we, we uh, others are superior. And so we will envy them. Both things happen when we don't think of ourselves rightly. And very different from this is love. 
you know when we are led by the spirit there is no scope for conceit we we'll, we will learn to serve others without thinking too much of ourselves so our friendships with people when we are assured and when we are confident of who we are in christ we will not be we will not have the attitudes of you know i will i am better than you so i will prove it that is one way of you know conceit and that's one way of doing or the other way is you are better than me and i envy you i don't like this you are better than me so both ways it is really not thinking of ourselves rightly ultimately it is you know something in our heart these things have to be done in our heart but it is really by knowing that who we are in christ being confident of who we are in christ and knowing that every person is important in their own right you know because god made them and god jesus died for them you know each one of us knowing that will give us great joy in serving others great joy in loving others you know that should be our attitude and that comes only by really settling things in our heart and uh, so uh, then how does it look like about die for friends you know how do how does it look like you know basically carry their burdens you know in in the galatians 62 continuation of that it says it's not you know carry their burdens it is not easy but you know jesus carries our burdens bible says cast your burdens unto jesus for he cares for you so here if you see there is an assumption in this verse that everyone has burdens there is no one who doesn't have burdens and god doesn't expect us to carry our own burdens you know carry them all by ourselves it is true that only jesus can bear the burden of sin no one else i cannot bear uh, preeti's bird, uh, burden of sin only jesus can do but here the burden uh, that he uh, paul is saying is not the burden of sin but really burden of anxiety burden of worries you know doubts and you know even the uh, inability to overcome sin so all these are the burdens so these are real burdens each one of us will understand that it is true that you know when we cast our burdens unto jesus he cares for us you know that is true but also one of the ways he cares for us is through each other you know it's 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 through each other he cares and through our friendships through our relationships so when we are like this with each other within the church you know and outside the church and the, the then the world will know the who the ultimate friend is who is this inspiration behind so going back to galatians uh, you know here it says uh, if you continue carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of christ so uh it says that you know we can understand from this that you know one more this just keep this in another one is uh, here if you see galatians 5:14 and 6:2 first one says for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command love your neighbor as yourself and the, in the next one carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill law of christ so we can see here loving your neighbor or loving one another you know as yourself and carrying each other's burdens are on the same line to fulfill the law isn't it both are in the same line to fulfill the law so we can understand from this to love your neighbor is simply carrying the person's burdens so loving your neighbor if you are not carrying the person's burdens it's there is that's not love you know we, uh, the, so coming alongside of someone who is burdened about something in their hearts in other words be their friend just the way jesus is our friend it is something that all of us should be doing carry each other's burdens get right into you know uh, get uh, right alongside get into the shoes of the person and let some of their burdens slide on you you know 
So whether it is an emotional burden or a financial burden or anything else you can think of, let as we carry their burdens, what happens is their burden comes on to you. So, suppose, you know, emotion, somebody is sharing their emotion, something wrong, something, you know, so if after hearing for one hour or after being there, you know, some of our, you know, you get emotionally drained if you have experienced. If someone financial burden, if you are sharing, your wallet gets empty, right? You know, it's, so it's a, it's a sum of our resources go. So that is how we carry each other. There has to be a sacrifice when we are carrying the burden. So as, as we do that, there definitely we will lose out on our resources. But God is nobody's debtor. God will fill us again and again. If we give, he will give back to us. In whichever way, if we give our time, we'll get more time. If we, I mean, I, I really have had this experience of, you know, like last one week was so, so busy. I cannot, you know, tell how many things, different things are happening. You know, like, but somehow, you know, God just proved that, you know, okay, uh, like how he is allowing me to share this today is just really God's grace. So, uh, so how else do we, you know, uh, bear others' burdens? It is without uh, really sacrificially, we cannot do that. It's not possible really without hurting ourselves. It's not possible. Without letting go of some of our resources, we cannot do that. So Paul, you know, if you notice, Paul doesn't say that bear one another's burdens, carry each other's burdens, you know, because I am saying so. No, but because Christ bore the burdens, our burdens. On the cross, Jesus didn't let, you know, uh, let a bit of our suffering put on himself. He, but every bit of our burden he took upon himself. So because he is the ultimate friend and we are so privileged to know this friend, to experience his friendship, his sticking nature with us, his love, which always, you know, it's never, it's ever flowing, never stops. And he laid down his life. So we, we can say, you know, true Christianity really reflects in the way we relate with one another. True Christianity is, I mean, the way we relate, the way we stick with one another, the way, good times and bad times, the way we stick with one another, the way we choose to always love, you know, one another, always bearing each other's burdens, not caring about our needs, but your good at my expense. That is what is really laying down one's life for others means. So may the Lord really help us to really, to be that friend to others. May we draw more and more close to God and understand the way He sticks with us. You know, come watch me. And His love for us is continuous. It is forever. Not for a time, little time when we are good and you know, doing well and when we are obedient. Not like that. His love is forever. And ultimately Jesus died for us so that we could live. So we may represent this Jesus in our lives, you know, when people see. So may, you know, even our children, yesterday it was so nice to see, there was one boy, you know, uh, in, a, in a wheelchair, and it was a friend of, I think, Rio or somebody. So it's so amazing the way, you know, every everything was done, all the games, Bobby was in charge of the games, and Bobby had to change the games to suit this boy. So she changed all the games to suit is to uh, suit uh, how he he also can play so it is you know that is the i know i really i was really thinking that i i pray that you know may all our children stick with their friends in that way you know like really so that they will know the true friend you know who we invest in, in our lives in uh, in their lives so let us, you know, and also at this point, I thought, let us thank God. As I was preparing this, I remembered uh, uh, friends who, who did this with us, who stuck with us, who uh, loved us through and through, never gave up on us, and who really invested so much in our lives. And uh, I mean, each one of us can think of it. So let's just thank God for the friends like that. And as we, you know, uh, Jason will take us through how you know, breaking of bread. So I'm sure each of us can think of someone who has been a friend like that to us. So 
let us commit ourselves to be that friend to others. It's not like, you know, okay, I can be friend like that only with one person or two person. It's not like that. Jesus is not like that. He is, he, we are all his friends. So, it's, uh, so, Jesus is our example. So, whomever God brings across, you know, we can sense that in God. Okay, you know, so let's just make, uh, commit ourselves to follow Jesus by being a friend to others the way he is with us. Thank you, thank you, Viji, for um, impressing on us how Jesus is a friend who sticks, who lays down his life, and who loves at all times. And as uh, Viji exhorted us, you know, let us also, as we grow in Christ likeness, be able to be do likewise, you know, uh, be a friend who sticks and be able to serve one another humbly and also to carry each other's burdens. Um, I was particularly impressed with the way she started off with the Charlotte's Web uh, story and how Charlotte the uh, spider you know, laid down a life for Wilbur the pig. And um, so this is something where Charlotte laid down her life for Wilbur and that was just uh, to save him uh, just once. But I just wanted to read what Jesus has done for us. You know, it is not to save just one life, but he did it for all mankind. So I'm just reading from Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 10 says, We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. For by And verse 14 says, For by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. So if Charlotte laid down her life for Wilbur, Jesus laid down his life for each and every one of us, for all of mankind, so that everyone can be made whole and be reconciled with the Father. And Jesus wants us to remember that because the enemy is very, um, you know, subtle and he can trick you into believing that, you know, you need something else and this sacrifice is not enough and he makes people want to do and uh, a lot of things trying to earn that salvation. And that is why if you read from... Uh, um, Corinthians Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed he took the bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So before we partake of this table of mercy and grace, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we do remember, Lord, that your body was broken and your blood was shed in order to make us whole and to reconcile us to the Father. And Lord, we remember and we believe, Lord, that this one sacrifice alone was enough, Lord, and salvation is, not, uh, is found in no other. And Lord, we want to thank you for reminding us, Lord, this morning. What a great friend you are, Lord. A friend who sticks, Lord, and who lays down his life. And Lord, who loves us at all times, Lord. No matter what we go through, Lord, you are there to rescue us, Lord. As our refuge and fortress, Lord. And Lord, today our prayer is, Lord, 
Lord, you would change us, Lord. You will change our hearts, Lord. And Lord, each of one, each one of us, Lord, would be able to be a friend like you, Lord, to those around us, Lord. Lord, to to be able to serve humbly, Lord, one another, and to be able to carry each other's burdens, Lord. And Lord, we know that you did not do this just for a select few, Lord, just for us. But Lord, you sacrificed yourself because you want no one to perish, Lord. And Lord, we pray that each one of us will be mindful of this. And Lord, we pray that each one of us would willingly, Lord, share this gospel of grace wherever we go, Lord, to those whom you put, Lord, in our way. And Lord, we pray that through this, many will many will be drawn to you, Lord, and experience, Lord, your saving grace. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen. All right. So now there's a table at the front. There's a table at the back. So you can come up and uh, partake of this Lord's table of mercy and grace. Now may the love of God the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forever. <laughs>